What it is with y'all, it's your boy MGZ coming at y'all with another video. Today's video, man, we got something a little bit different. We taking a break from the music reactions. Go check out the last two music reactions I did, but listen, we got the internet is worse than ever. Now what? What do we do? We got a little education. We got a little education on this channel. I think this low-key goes hand-in-hand -hand with the stuff I preach about on this channel, but look, Instagram link down below. Y'all make sure to go follow me there. That's where I'm most active on. Um, we 40 subscribers away from 10,000, so if you really care about me, you care about my career and my success, uh, you gonna go ahead and hit that button, but I ain't gonna sit here and hold y'all too much longer. Let's get it, yo. In 2022, nearly half of Americans expected a civil war in the next few years. One in five now believes political violence is justified. And it's not just the US, but around the world. People increasingly see themselves as part of opposing teams. That's facts. There are many different reasons for this, but one gets blamed a lot, social media. Social media divides us, makes us more extreme and less empathetic, it riles us up or sucks us into doom scrolling, making us stressed and depressed. It feels like we need to touch grass and escape to the real world. New research shows that we might have largely misinterpreted why this is the case. It turns out that the social media internet may uniquely undermine the way our brains work, but not in the way you think. The myth of the filter bubble. You've probably Hold on, before we get into the myth of the filter bubble, I just want to say one thing because this is something I think about a lot. I think about okay, right now I'm 20, right? I turned 21 next year, like in March. But if I think about the time from, I don't know when I got my first phone. I probably got my first phone in when I was 16. I had an iPod and I had stuff like that before I asked, but I had all the consoles and everything. I just didn't get a phone until I was, I want to say 15, 16. But so from when I was one years old to, I'll say, 16 years old, think about how much time I spent not on a phone, right? So now I want to, not some, how many hours, right? Now I'm thinking about from age, you know, okay, we'll say 14 when I got an iPod to age 20, how many hours I've spent on my phone. Which one you think's more? The time I spent away from my phone or the hours I've been on my phone? We heard about that. online filter bubbles. Algorithms give you exactly what you want or what they think you want. You only see information that shows you opinions that agree with yours, while dissenting opinions or information are filtered out. Censorship. Since you only see content close to your worldview, more extreme and toxic opinions suddenly seem less extreme. You're trapped in a radicalizing filter bubble and your view of the world becomes narrower and more extreme. But is that true? Extreme filter bubbles seem to be rather rare. Studies that investigated what people actually look at online or are shown by search engines found little evidence that you're ideologically isolated. It's the exact opposite. Yeah, because they online, want you to you fight. you're constantly confronted with opinions and worldviews that yeah. are not your own. It turns out that the place where you are the most ideologically isolated is your real life in the real world with real people. Your real-world interactions with your friends, family, colleagues, and neighbors are much less diverse than your online bubble. The filter bubble exists in your real life, not online. Okay, wait. Online filter bubbles have been the prevailing explanation as to why we've all started hating each other more over the last two decades. If that's not the case, shouldn't the internet open our minds and make us more empathetic with each other? No, no, no. The internet's meant to divide us. That's, that's the sole purpose of the internet. And that's what I was saying, like at the beginning of the video, I said this in all my videos, man, they got the left versus the right, and they make you feel like you're on opposing teams where you guys got to bicker back and forth, you know? When it comes to politics and everything, I mean, I'm just, I just sit neutral, I sit centered and everything. I know a lot of people say, oh, you don't have a bad bone, but it's not, but I'm not getting caught up in this. Now I got friends, you know, who, you know, have what they call leftist view. I have friends that, you know, are far right. And, and whatnot, and I have some right views, I have some left views, if that's how you want to go about it, Republican, Democrat, you know, liberal, conservative, it don't matter, I'm, I'd say I'm more to the conservative side, if that's how things are, but I'm never looking to pick a fight with anyone, I'm never sitting here arguing about politics, this and that, because at the end of the day, you got to realize that this stuff is just to, meant to divide us, and it's just a popularity contest, you know, why are we letting this shit, you know what I'm saying, take over, it's not how it should be. Huh? Unfortunately, your brain is stupid. Right. Your brain is stupid. Human brains didn't evolve to understand the true nature of reality, but to navigate and maintain social structures. Our ancestors desperately needed each other to survive, so our brains had to make sure we cooperated. 
That's why social isolation or exclusion feels so horrible, because it was actually life-threatening. A tribe that worked together survived. A divided tribe died. The way communities worked for thousands of years is that, sure, you may have disliked a neighbour, but because you lived close to each other, you also rooted for the same sports club or saw them at church. You both thought that the people from the other village were idiots. Being physically close made you familiar and created similarities that bridged the gap of different worldviews so you didn't murder each other. And your worldview was probably not that different in the first place because it was formed by the same local culture. Mm. When our brains evolved, this was enough. Whoever was around was similar to us. We liked what was similar to us. This kept us aligned enough to work together despite our differences. This is interesting. As humanity moved on from small tribes to towns and cities, from chiefdoms to kingdoms to nations, our brains and our communities had to adapt to more diverse sets of neighbors. We began to meet on the town square or in universities where we argued and screamed at each other. Okay, the so then my question it, is, my, this, this is making me think a little. This is why I like videos like this. I might have to do a little bit more, but okay, so we're animals, right? Um, every li like okay, you're either you know a living organism, right? Plants, animals, such, right? Oh, um, since we're animals, right? When you see somebody, when you see somebody doing something dumb, right? When you see someone doing something dumb, you think, oh man, that guy's an idiot, that guy's stupid. Look what he just did, and you start questioning. But then again, I think I can't remember. I think we've only um. We've only discovered was it like ten percent of our brain, five percent of our brain. Like we haven't, we haven't even discovered like a hundred percent of our brain. So we don't really know, you know, what's going on. So is it fair to call someone dumb or stupid or an idiot or something like that if you see them do something dumb, or is it just like, just like remember we're animals, so they just like obviously aren't processing things. They just like a, a more dumb, you know what I'm saying, animal. Yet things communities were still relatively isolated we were still pretty similar and aligned with the people around us conflict and disagreement are not a bad thing per se so it's fair Attention to be dumb how we should live can create new and wonderful things our values norms and taboos are always evolving and whatever we think is normal today will not be normal in the future but we also need social glue to hold our societies together because our brains don't care about the meta level of humanity so about glue. being safe for tribe music until about 20 years ago we did something truly new that hit our brains like a freight train the social media internet the digital town square don't you dare disagree with me social sorting in a nutshell our brains are not able to process the amount of disagreement we encounter on the social internet. The very mechanisms that made it possible for our ancestors to work together in the first place are derailed in ways we were not prepared for. Whether you want it to or not, your brain sorts people by worldviews and opinions into teams. This is not simply tribalism, it goes further. Researchers have called this process social sorting. On the digital town square, you encounter people that express opinions or share information that clash with your worldview. But unlike your neighbor, they don't root for your local sports club. You're missing the local social glue your brain needs to align with them. For your brain, the disagreement between yourself and them becomes a central part of their identity. And this makes it less likely that you will seriously consider their position or opinion in the future. If you hear bad things about them, your brain is much more likely to believe it uncritically. On the flip side, there are... Um, I think that I'm, I'm pretty reasonable, I'm pretty fair when it comes to disagreements and stuff. However, when I'm set on a view, I'm set on it. And that's the, way, that's the way it is with a lot of, you know, my worldviews and a lot of, you know, things I believe in that are morally right and, um, and, and such, right? Uh, with that being said, it's very hard to, you know, change my my views and my opinions on things however however i have changed views and opinions on plenty of things all right and i can't sit here and name them off topic i have to think but there's always that's the thing about you just stay neutral man you just stay neutral you take in information from both sides and you you pretty much feel you know you whichever one resonates most with you that the ones that you know that's just how that's just how it goes Right. You don't have to have friends tell you this. You don't have to, you know, have a news station tell you this is right. This is wrong. This is not a majority people tell you that this is right and wrong, you know, for you to be right or for you to be wrong. Just whatever suits you, you follow, you stick with. 
and don't do nobody harm. Just, just rock out. Are people who share your worldview and are maybe even more similar to you than many people in your real life, which makes your brain like them a lot and kind of hyper align with them. People who think like you are probably good people because you're a good person and whatever social group you belong to is good. Right, not so true. your brain is more likely to believe their opinions. If you hear bad things about them, your brain is much more likely to dismiss it uncritically. The engagement-driven social internet makes it worse because it wants to keep you online as long as possible. And the most engaging emotion is, unfortunately, anger. anger. The more angry you get, the more likely you are to share and engage. And this leads to social media amplifying the most extreme and controversial opinions. It optimizes not only to show us disagreement, but the worst disagreement possible. And because your stupid brain is sorting people into teams, whatever the worst opinions are, it assigns the same opinions to everybody on the other team. What's striking and new about online polarization is that all the aspects of our lives that make us individuals, our lifestyle choices, the comedians or shows we watch, our religion, sense of fashion and so on, are condensed, making it seem that they're parts Ooh. of opposing and mutually exclusive identities. This simplifies and distorts disagreements about how we should run society so much that it often seems as if the people on the oh. other team are actively, willfully <coughs> making the world. That's one thing. Okay, this is probably going to be like my second last time I pause this video, but I remember, you know, people used to say, oh yeah, I'm vegetarian, I'm vegan type thing, right? And I always thought, man, you crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you crazy. You got to eat meat, blah, 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 blah. And they went on to talk about how Right. Um, oh, well, you're doing this to animals. You're doing that to animals. Right. Fair. And I got to say one thing, bro. I am a hypocrite. I am a hypocrite because, you know what I'm saying? I, well, I don't know if I'm a hypocrite. I'm going to eat meat always. But like, it, I'm just, no, it's, it is obviously is sad what happens to animals. It is sad what happens. But I'm not, I don't let that overtake my, you know, my food preference. However, I would call, you know, vegetarians or vegans like, man, they crazy. They dumb. You know what I'm saying? But then I think when I was in grade 11, I went on a plant-based diet for a little bit. Just I just want to see. I just want to see something, how my body reacted, you know, to, you know, like I'd be eating like veggie burgers, stuff like that. And I, I, I'd be 100% honest with you. My body felt good. Like, I felt like good. You know what I'm saying? I was eating a lot more natural foods, um, less processed, you know, foods with preservatives in them. And that changed my view. I was like, you know what? I'm still, you know, I'm still going to eat meat, this and that, but, you know, have, going like three, four months, you know, vegan really was like, you know, it was interesting. It was interesting. So now it's like, you know, world worse. No more positive. That they're almost evil beyond convincing with rationality, facts, or civil discussion. While you are, of course, on the correct team, it may be hard to process that you may seem like that to people on the other team. On a societal level, this is dissolving the social glue that's the foundation of our democracies. If we think our neighbors are evil, how can we live together? Mm. This is especially bad in the US, where the two-party system makes it extra easy to think of people in terms of teams. Yeah. Negative opinion about the other party has reached record highs. Okay, is there something we can learn from this? Is there something we can do? Something more positive, opinion part. In the end, it's important to be aware of what social media does to your brain. It's easier to change yourself than to change the world, so you can self-examine why you believe the things you believe and whether you dismiss or believe information based on who the person is who is stating that information. The internet comes with a lot of ups and downs, and just like we had to adapt from living in small tribes to living in cities, we need to adapt to the information age where we have access to billions of people. Evolution is too slow so we need to find models that work with what our brains are able to tolerate. One model that seemed to work well was the pre-social media internet old people might remember. Bulletin boards, forums, blogs. The main difference to today was twofold. For one, there were no algorithms fighting to keep you online at any cost. At some point, you were done with the internet for the day, as mind-blowing as this may sound. But more importantly, the old internet was very fractured, split into thousands of different communities, like small villages gathering around shared beliefs and interests. These villages were separated from each other by digital rivers or mountains. These communities worked because they mirrored real life much more than... Not gonna lie, though, there's, there's something about, you know, arguing with people, though, and fighting that's fun. And, like, that's not a crazy... I don't think that's a crazy thing to say because... Um, 
like when I had my Xbox 360 and stuff, and I'd be playing like Call of Duty Black Ops, you know, Black Ops and just, just whatever games, man. GTA, all those games, bro. You'd be up online, man. You'd just be cussing at people. You'd just be yelling back and forth, just fighting all the time. And I think, I think anger, okay, emotions, there's nothing wrong with showing emotions, you know. I think that, I don't think that being angry is just as good as being happy. I think the goal is to be happy and be happy, and, you know what I mean? But And on 2K especially, and that's what I would always go off on. But sometimes it's, you know, good to fight with people. And then after time, bro, when you play 2K and stuff, and you start arguing with someone for, like, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, at the end, like, at the end, you just start laughing. Like, both people will start laughing. It's just like, man, like, what, like, what is Because you're just saying ridiculous stuff. But sometimes I feel like it's good to, you know, take anger out over, you know, over over the over the game with other people who want to take it out too, if that makes sense. That's not toxic though, because it's a time and a place for it. Social media. Each village had its own culture and set of rules. Maybe one community was into rough humor and soft moderation, another had strict rules and banned easily. If you didn't play by the village rules, you'd be banned. Or you could just go and move to another village that suited you better. So instead of all of us gathering in one place, overwhelming our brains at a town square that in the end just leads us to going insane, one solution to achieve less social sorting may be extremely simple. Go back to smaller online communities. Because what our stupid brains don't realize is that we are actually all on the same team. Humanity on a wet rock speeding through space in a universe that doesn't think about us. We are all in this together. But until our brains adjust to being able to deal with that, we might be better off being a tiny bit separated. One of the worst things about the media we consume is that most news organizations tend to cater to one team, making you feel you're on the correct side. Ground News, the sponsor of this video, oh, is this trying to make these biases more transparent by giving you tools that help you think critically about- It's just an advertisement, but listen, y'all, I think that we could do better, you know, as humans, you know, to come together, love, bring peace. Because at the end of the day, we're all we got. Like you said, we just moving through space. We just moving through space. Do you think the universe cares about us? I don't know. It's up to us to, you know, make changes to do better for each other. And I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm all for it. But I ain't going to sit here and hold y'all too much longer. We going on to 20 minutes. I hope everybody stays safe. Has a good day. I love y'all. Boy, I'm G signing out. Y'all 40 subs away from 10K. Let's get it.